good afternoon to, to everyone. It's a pleasure to be uh, with you here. Uh, the purpose of this presentation uh, is to share with you the, the different barriers uh, we have encountered in the process of adopting inner source in, in Santander Bank. And the first of all is to talk a little about ourselves and, and why we decided to, to implement inner source in, in Santander. So my name is, is Jesus Alonso and I'm in charge uh, of the inner source office at Santander Bank for Europe. And also here is with us Daniel Izquierdo from Vitergia. So Dani. Hi everyone. Thank you, Jesus. So this is Daniel Izquierdo. I am the CEO of Vitergia, um, part of the governing board of the inner source commons and the chaos community as well. So really involved in inner source lately. Thank you, Danny. Uh, after this, uh, let me share a brief context. So uh, at the beginning of 2021, uh, we established within Santander a, a new organizational structure that brings the, together the, the European countries and, and whose main objective was to reduce costs. And uh, why inner source? So, well, in this European context, from the technology area, we determined that we had to, to find products or, or services uh, that were being used in, in all geographies and uh, with the goal uh, of not building the, the same many times in several countries. And we detected that uh, the best and, and most efficient way to develop uh, these products were uh, through open source processes in the organization. So we started to implement in our source. Then at the moment, uh, at that moment, uh, we hired Vitergia as inner source experts in order to, to help us to implement this way of working in Santander. And here, Danny, if you want to talk about our first approach. So the uh, inner source program office that we started to build at the beginning of the year, uh, its goal is to be the central piece, the central key piece for everyone to foster uh, transparency and collaboration across the organization for these uh, four European countries. Um, we started with initially an ASIS assessment using the inner source classes to understand where we were at the very beginning, right, in terms of maturity and capabilities needed for, for the several developers and the several teams. And then once we understood all of this, we were able to have like a strategic plan for 2021. So the inner source program office is the place where we are all working together that is known in the corporation to be uh, this inner source uh, leadership and helping other projects as the one we are presenting today. Um, for this, during this analysis, we discovered in interviews and surveys and, 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 and this talk with, with everyone in, in the company, we discovered a, a certain bunch of barriers. Barriers were those things, those challenges that we've seen were hard to deal with from a personal or team perspective or even corporation perspective. These, these were split into two main of them, people and teams and company and corporate. We're focusing in the first place on people and teams. We discovered things as well, maybe language. People uh, didn't feel that comfortable speaking in all of them in one, in, uh, in one language, specifically in English. Uh, there were, of course, uh, technological uncertainty when moving uh, from certain processes and technologies to new ones brought by uh, inner source. This is kind of related to the fear of change and, and how to frame, how to deal with this, because we all have like, you know, objectives that we are tracked by. Um, there might be a certain lack of motivation of, of this change because, well, if things are working and, and things in Santander has worked for the last 130 years, so why, 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 why this change now, right? Um, definitely, this is kind of bringing this concept of, of, of inertia and, and, you know, resiliency about moving forward to, to new ways. We discovered as well other, other topics as, for instance, low autonomy. Uh, we, we, we felt that developers needed to be empowered by by the organization in somehow it's it's true and and, and so uh, related to the corporate barriers uh, firstly uh, we detected that santander had no way of measuring uh, how collaboration and, and contribution was working uh, because until this moment uh, it wasn't something that uh, had been contemplated uh, so we had to think about how to develop an inner source uh, metric strategy for uh, strategy for example <clears throat> Additionally, uh, many people showed us that, that uh, it will be difficult for them to maintain communication with developers from other countries and, and their way of working because in Santander, uh, the developers among countries uh, had never been in contact before and we didn't have an operating model or, or defined communication or, or collaboration channels. Also, uh, we saw that usually in the organization, uh, speed uh, was more important uh, than quality. So, was more important to check the deadlines 
to accomplish the, the time instead of, of execute those roadmaps, those uh, roadmaps uh, very well. And, and this made uh, difficult trying to, to change the traditional way of working. And uh, uh, finally, uh, and, and the most important barrier, uh, in my opinion, uh, at the bank, the source code uh, was and, and is still considered a confidential asset. And this issue uh, generates uh, many problems uh, when trying to open to open it uh, within the organization. For example, uh, trying to open the access to the code platforms uh, to everyone in the organization was a problem uh, that we had to manage. Or, for example, uh, allowing the forking process uh, or the repository clones uh, was something that was tough to, to manage. Yeah, that's that's indeed a very a very good point. So we. This is this is the role of the ISPO, right? Like this central piece that we need to talk maybe to human resources, we need to talk to marketing, we need to talk to cybersecurity, we need to talk to legal, to taxes, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is like this glue across all of the organizations and so on. Um, and the way we were we were dealing with uh, with all of this work, at least for the project for 2021, was mainly uh, based on these these three main areas. The first one was as as, as we mentioned at the very beginning, the asset assessment trying to explore about these barriers, learning from the challenges that we we were, we, we were facing in somehow. Then we are we are right now with the projects we are dealing with um, in the process of open by default. So we need to have everything there. And the barriers that are related to this is about the trusted committer that probably you have heard about this, this role, empowerment of, of developers, the uh, having open platforms, as Jesus mentioned before, with the fork, the clones, everything, having access to the code directly, no matter who you are. And of course, English trainings with with the uh, language uh, difficulties and so on. And then finally, something that we are starting uh, lately in the last uh, weeks is this uh, process of fostering collaboration. So now that we have, let's say, our house clean and ready for the visits for our guests, then we need to 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 guess, to discuss, to to move forward into this collaborative uh, environment. And for this, there are some of the uh, some of the patterns or barriers that we've discovered that should that are part of this that we are start dealing with them as the metrics analytics platform uh, involve cybersecurity for the forks etc etc or even the community engagement and <clears throat> after the work uh, we have done in 2021 as Tani has said uh, we can say that we have started to obtain some benefits uh, regarding regarding for example regarding the efficiency improvement uh, we have reduced costs uh, because uh, before we had uh, four local budgets and now we have a single reduced uh, budget. Uh, another benefit is uh, we have uh, gained is the developer experience. Here uh, we have achieved to have a more empowered layer of developers in, in the organization. And also we have some advantage, advantage uh, that uh, we have begun to see not consolidated but starting to see them in an incipient way. And uh, for example, this is a motivate the innovation and uh, to give you an example, recently uh, our team from Portugal proposed uh, a new improvement, improvement uh, on a product to be shared with all the countries and, and that was no, not contemplated in the roadmap. And uh, we also see that the customer experience improves and as our customers uh, receive a consistent image uh, of the similar service among, among countries. And finally, uh, we have some advantages that uh, although we haven't yet matured, uh, we believe uh, we will have shortly. And these are uh, the reduction in, in time to market. Because, uh, for example, when uh, an incident happens in the product, we believe that this should be resolved in less time. And finally, and, and we hope that the quality of our, our, our software should improve thanks uh, to having more comprehensive, comprehensive and, and automated uh, review processes. And uh, this is all from our side. Uh, thank you uh, very much for your attention. And we hope it has been useful. See you in Slack. Thank you. Thank you.